Hello everyone, and welcome to T-Fall Talk, the podcast where we shine a light on awesome teen fans in the LEGO community doing amazing things, and maybe the occasional A-Fall too. I'm Doodle Bricks, aka Kavi, and today we're going to be hanging out with RJM Bricks. Ben, how are you doing? Good, how are you? I'm good, thank you. I'm ready to get this started. So I'd say, just to start off, who is RJ Embrix and what do you do in the LEGO world? I am a T-Fall. I am a LEGO YouTuber and my whole thing is I make videos, typically mechanical videos of LEGO stuff. And that's kind of my whole gig. All right, mechanical videos with like, um, with like Mindstorms and like the... The whole like uh, boost, I think it not boost, but mindstorms and power functions. That's what it is. Things yeah. like that, right? Yeah, I typically use power functions. I haven't delved into mindstorms yet, but I did look into buying some since they're going well. They've been out of stock, which means the price is just going to go higher. So they have, yeah. No, those things yeah. they're expensive. I mean, worth it, but expensive. <laughs> yeah. All right. So how how old are you, as well, if I may ask? I am. 16 nearing 17 16 nearing 17 wow that is amazing dude and how long have you been like into lego for generally i honestly can't remember when i started but i do know that it's been like probably eight maybe 10 years of a lego fanatics all right i see how did that start like what got you into it i think well, my first set, I think, was this, like, poly bag of a fire helicopter. And I don't remember why or, like, when I got it, but all I know, and it's kind of blurred after that, but all I know is I have, I got that, and then I just, there's never been a point when I didn't like Lego since then. Okay, so it just started with a poly bag, and then it all went from yep. there. God, yeah. that's that's cool. I don't think I've heard of a lot of people's kind of Lego passion or like I guess the thing that got them into it, starting with a poly bag. Like that that's really cool. Yeah, I think it was just something small and I maybe saw it at a target or something. I was like, oh I want that. And I probably knew what maybe knew what Lego was before that. But and then actually at my grandparents we'd go up and they had a big tub of my uncle's old Lego and I would play with that and then I just would get a few sets here and there, and then it spiraled into this. Ah, uh, the classic tub, the the big tub of Lego with just the yep. bajillion pieces. Yeah, the day I got to take that home was was a good day. <laughs> oh, you got to take it home? Yep, they didn't want it anymore, so got to sort the big tub. And all right, well that's awesome. It's <laughs> it's always fun to like when somebody just gives you their like their Lego that they don't want anymore. It's just, it's like such yeah. a good feeling. It's like, oh man, you just get to like, if it's not damaged, it's great to just look through all the parts and be like, wow, this is yeah. just so cool. Yeah. It's, and they were your pretty old sets too. Really? What kind of old sets? Like there were some old knight ones and like the old, uh, not the lion knight castle, but one of them. It act no, actually it might've been the lion knight castle. Like um, the classic yellow lion knight's castle? No, it was the gray one. Okay. Oh, no, right. no, no, no. It was the Black Falcon, Black Falcon Castle. Okay. The Black Falcon. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there was some I I... like old space ones and all sorts of stuff, but it was all very old and stuff that new now would be quite wanted. Well, that is flipping awesome. Do you still have any of those built, or have they all become part of the collection? I honestly, at least until like maybe this year or last year now i didn't honestly keep anything built i couldn't keep a set built for longer than like a month if that and so none of those are built i would occasionally build them like on and off i did actually sell the castle one but really um, yeah do you regret that now or are you good with not it? really i mean i'm not really a collector in the sense that i i like keeping my sets built like like you have a shelf of sets behind you i i don't have something like that i just 
sort my pieces and use them for the pieces. I'm more about like, I want a fun building experience and then does it have cool pieces? So, I mean, I don't, I wouldn't really use the pieces from the castle anyways, cause they're quite specific and the kind of discolored gray color that they don't use anymore. Oof. So I see. That's really cool. I kind of envy you, honestly, because, you know, like, as you pointed out, I keep most of my sets built. Like, over time, some of them will slowly become part of just the loose bricks. But, man, I always really, like, I look at my sets and I'm like, oh, they have such good pieces. I want to take Yeah. them apart so badly, but I can't bring myself to do it. So I, I envy you just being able to build it, be like, this is cool. And then off to the off to the sorting bins it goes. Yeah, I basically just look at the set, like if I buy it, it's like, that has really cool pieces, and also like, does it look cool, will it be fun to build, and then I'll build it and then take it apart when I feel like it. Like right now I have the, the Lamborghini C and FPK built still, because it's a bunch of like lime green panel pieces that I'm not going to use, so that's the reason it's still built. But like, I have a modular and the grand piano just still built, which are because I have so much to sort, I just don't haven't got around to taking them apart yet, but I'm not displaying them or anything because I definitely don't have room for that. <laughs> Yeah, I understand that. That that makes sense about the Lamborghini as well. I don't think there are a ton of uses for the 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 you know those Yeah. like lime green panels. But no, I I get you about Plus, the it's sorting really good thing display as well. piece. It is. It is a beautiful set. Like I mean, Technic isn't really my thing, but even I can appreciate that. Like it's gorgeous. Yeah, I only have two Technic sets, and well, actually, I might have smaller ones, but I have the the Airbus set, um, and it's quite new. It has the new neon green pieces and whatnot, but I, I got it for the mechanisms, and then the Lamborghini obviously has insane mechanisms, and I'm not like... really a builder of stuff like that like I don't build in Technic but I still build mechanisms so it's really fun for me to see what the designers can come up with because it's really impressive Oh yeah, it is. That's that's a really great, I guess, way to improve your building skills. Like to get the sets that have those really complex mechanism and mechanisms and learn from them. yeah for sure Definitely it's fun a good technique. All right, well that is awesome. So you said how you got into Lego generally, but how did you get into like power functions? So, I remember I have the really old motor that's just like this big battery box that has a little switch that goes side to side, and then like this cord to this just small motor. It's super old. It doesn't work anymore, but I, I always had that, and actually, not too long ago, my, my dad found a video of me when I was really little, and I had this like three-in-one helicopter that I hooked the motor up to, and was just like messing around with that. And I remember one day I was like, I just want to like play with motors and all of the sets that had them were expensive and I couldn't get them at the time because I was younger and didn't have a job or anything. Um, so I went on and spent like $60 on like a battery box, like two different motors and like a controller and receiver. And then ever since then, I've just had those motors to play around with. And yeah, it, ever since then, I just would use the motors and builds. And then I kind of, at least for my channel, I typically... am more proud of things when I upload them that have mechanisms and just seem more complex. Otherwise, like, unless it's a really, like, fancy build or, like, something that's impressive without a mechanism, I just typically wouldn't make it as a video because, I don't know, the mechanisms for me is what makes it my channel, really. Totally. It really, it's like, it really sets you apart, I'd say. And especially, you're like one of the only teen, like, T-Falls that I have seen that does mechanism stuff and all that to, like, the, the super impressive degree that you do. Thank you. No problem. But I was going to say, yeah, no, I mean, that, make, that makes sense as well. That's I think that's good that you, like, stick with the mechanisms mostly because, I mean, your normal builds are fantastic as well. But, like, once again, that's, like, your thing, right? And you're, you know, you're Yeah. good at it as well. And you're really good at, like, coming up with just all sorts of different ideas that, you know, I, like, me and a bunch of other people I know would just never come up with. Like, you, um, you made working arcade games, and, like, that's just Yeah. incredible. Yeah, that actually kind of was my first video to do well. I know I I made um the racing game, the original racing game, and that was my first like video that like reached like at the time like good views and it was probably like 7,000 views or something. And and then I I also did like a little like racetrack thing and that was a YouTube short that did well. And ever since then I 
even before I like actually had a substantial YouTube channel, I was just like, I would revert back to those things as the things that I would like tell people about, like the, the cool things that I've built. And that kind of cemented the mechanical side of my channel because other things to be like, yeah, I can build that, but there's so many people out there building just cool mocks, but there's not people out there making working mechanical video games and stuff like that, which I find more impressive. Definitely. No, that's good. It, once again, it really sets you apart from a bunch of the other content creators. And it's it's a really good thing to have as well, because it's just, it's so, there's something that I guess gets you more engaged when it actually has a function and things like that, right? Like, mocks on yeah. their own are awesome. And but when they have things like movement and stuff like that, it just kind of brings it up to a whole nother level. Yeah. And tit like sp YouTube speaking, having a payoff at the end where there's some feature that like finally works is something that will hook viewers more than just the the models finished and here look at it. Like if there's a mechanical feature to to finally turn on or like here I'm going to switch it on and this is what's going to happen finally it's going to work. People will watch because they want to see that actual thing like finally happen successfully. You're right. That does make sense. I didn't actually think about it that way, but not that that makes a lot of sense so what is like the what's the process of making one of your builds like like how long does it take you how do you go about figuring out how to make these mechanisms work and stuff like that honestly it's a process of complete trial and error i get the idea of what i'm going to build and obviously i'm recording the whole way along and like for instance like i don't know you probably saw the piston video um that was just the... a case of... What? Go ahead. I was going to say, I saw the dispenser video. I didn't see the piston one, though. Oh, yeah. The piston was, like, the precursor, the original one that, that kind of started that, I don't know, series, if you want to call it that. But um, basically, it was a lever-activated piston to the same scale as the dispenser. Um, but basically, it was just, like, I tried motorizing it, but everything was too heavy to push the piston out. And I just, like went through a bunch of different techniques until I found that obviously, and I should have known this, the simplest way was possible where it was just like Technic pins and beams to, to lever activate the thing without motors or anything. Um, yeah, I just, I basically just try different things until they work. And if you open up and look at the inside of any of my build, it is very not sturdy, but it gets the job done. <laughs> That's good. As long as it gets the job done at the end of the day. But that's that's really funny about what you said about how just the simplest, you know, design actually ended up being the most effective. It's really funny how things like that just can work out sometimes. Like you can come up with all these crazy kind of ideas of, oh, maybe like this crazy mechanism. But at the end of the day, sometimes just the simplest ones are just the most effective. And yeah. Yeah. And for the dispenser, I mean, it came down to making a literal like rubber band shooter for the arrow rather than some sort of like wind up mechanical like motorized thing. And I don't know. It it seems like for those type of things, actually not using a motor is actually more helpful because you can just be purely mechanical and not have any function because then I don't have to worry about like, is it going to get switched on and then how's it going to get switched off without like running the motors too far and all that type of stuff. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. It, it eliminates a lot more of the, I guess, room for error with the, you know, electronic stuff and things like that. But how do you yeah. like, how do you, I guess, record? Board as you're working on the build because I've like thought about doing that myself with certain mocks and things but the way I build personally it's like so chaotic and all over the place that like I don't know how I would film like my process of doing it so how do you do it in a way that you know obviously like isn't just like grabbing grabbing of your phone and just like moving around the place like putting all together but you know your processes actually look really good so how do you how do you do that well, I mean, I have a desk that I build on and then another, well, it's connected to the same desk that goes kind of like next to me. And then I have a bunch of my storage on there and I don't know, I just, I have my lights set up for a specific spot and then I get my tripod and I still use my phone to record and then I just, you know, put it at a, a good angle and I switch angles occasionally or like which tripod I'm using, like the one in between my arms or the one like over my shoulder and then I kind of just you know, record as I go, and then if I finish for the day, I'll just stop recording and then find a new angle and whatever the next day or whenever I start building again. All right, that's pretty good. 
I was gonna say, um, do you just like record all the way through, or do you kind of like just record for like segments of time and then stop it? And when you feel like something interesting to look at, might like as you're working on it, might be coming up again, like start the video again. No, I record basically the whole time. Unless, I mean, I sometimes get lazy and I'm like, I don't want to set the tripod up. But for the most part, it's just constant recording and then sifting through to find the right clips. Wow, that is that must be pretty time consuming. Yeah, for sure. It's definitely one of the reasons I prefer to not edit. But I mean, yeah, no, yeah. definitely. It it seems like a process for sure. But hey, you do it well. Thank you. Yeah, I try. And how long does it usually take you to complete a build? Um, if we're well, if we're talking just the build or like the entire video. Mm, I'd say maybe like the build first, and then you know, on top of like editing and all that stuff. So the build it totally depends, and I have a completely sporadic, like schedule it's not a schedule at all it's just when i feel like working um but i mean if i sat down and did it i don't know if you saw my um oh what is it my driving simulator the the second I one i did that's the first um, video of yours i saw yeah that was kind of the one that like that was the second video that kind of spiraled into so to speak going viral or whatever you want to call it but um yeah that one like, this will be the example of, like, the fastest I can possibly do it build. And that one was complicated, too. I think we had uh, two days that weren't planned to have no school. And I just built the entire first day and then maybe, like, two hours the next morning and the entire thing was done. Wow. wow. So, like, a day and a half, maybe. Barely that. So, probably, like, eight hours, something like that, to build the entire thing. But now, like, I don't just sit down and do an entire build in a day. So, I mean, it could take a week, but that's not a week of just straight building. So, yeah, yeah. and that's say, like eight to 15 hours of building for whatever the build is. All right. I see. That's cool. Wow. The fact that you were able to get that driving simulator done in just like just about a day and a bit. That's that's impressive. I was surprised by myself there, too. I think it was partly fueled by an, a little bit of urgency because the video before that was the flight simulator, um, which kind of slowly went exponential and got like, at the time it was like, got to 500,000 views. It's doubled now because of, it's been out for so long. Damn. But that one, I hadn't uploaded for a month after that. And I was talking to some other YouTubers and they're like, this is like your chance to really cement your your content and keep getting the viewers and i was working on a different video at the time it was like i beat minecraft in lego or whatever i never actually i i scrapped that but i was like i need to do something of a similar genre to the flight simulator so i was like driving simulator and then i was like it's been so long since i uploaded the views are going to dwindle so i did that in a day and a half edited it probably in a couple days and then got it out and it did quite well yeah no it's it's at like something million now right like I think it's at like 2.1 million now. That's incredible. Wow. Wow, that is amazing. Yeah, no, that's definitely that's definitely good that you got that out cuz that I remember yeah. like I, I discovered your channel like a while back and that was the first one that popped up and I was like driving simulator. How how does that work? And I was so amazed seeing that. So that's that's really good that you were able to get that out quickly. Yeah, I want to start doing more stuff like that. Like I, I like doing non-mechanical things, too, and I, I, I want to have a bit of variation. So, like, the video after the one I'm working on is going to be uh, not mechanical. It's going to be Minecraft-related, and it has, Ooh. like, I ordered, like, 12,000 pieces for it. So, it's going to be quite large. Um, and so, I like doing, like, big, like, statement-y, like, massive things, but if it's, like, not something huge... I'll I'll do something mechanical instead, and then maybe just build on the side, um, not for a video. Okay, I see. Man, that that sounds like a like a pretty cool video coming up. So I look forward to seeing that. But so speaking of Minecraft as well, you said that the video you were originally gonna do before you settled on the driving simulator was you beat 
Minecraft and Lego. How how is that gonna go? That sounds really interesting. Yeah, well, I completely scrapped that. I'm never gonna do that video. But um, honestly, I'm not sure what I was planning. I mean, I had started building, but I was gonna like build everything I needed in the game. So like I'd build wood, Oh. and then I had like a crafting table top I had built, and then I was gonna. It wouldn't have made a very good video, I don't think, and I'm glad I scrapped it. But I was just going to, like, build everything I needed. Um, and at I the see. time, I didn't order pieces for videos, so I was kind of limited, so it wouldn't have turned out very well. But, um, yeah, I mean, now I have to basically order for every single video I do. Wow. Okay. That that must be annoying having to wait on like shipping and stuff for that now. Yeah, well, typically I upload once a month, and I want to upload more than that. But, I mean, I mostly do Bricklink, which, if I need to, I can pay more for shipping and just have it shipped priority. But the problem is, with LEGO, if it's not bestseller, it takes like a month, which is a pain. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. Because I went to the LEGO store recently, and they had six of the seven new Minecraft sets for January 1st. And I picked up the six they had, because I need all seven for the video. But um, I had to order the one, and it was back order. And so we'll see. It's supposed to ship the 20th. But I mean, I'm kind of like, it's more flexible because I just, I can store the pieces and then maybe do that video a month later. So like the Minecraft one that I'm planning for next month, if I don't have the pieces and the set in time, because there's another Lego order coming that will take forever because it's not bestseller. Um, if that doesn't come in time, I can just do another video in between that I might not have to order as much for and then kind of just shift around my planning. That's clever. That's clever doing, you know, shorter videos in between to fill the gaps. That's definitely a definitely a good strategy. So before you order like the pieces for your builds, do you like do kind of like a rough draft on like a digital building program or something? Or do you just like like to make sure that those are the pieces you need? Or do you just you just know and just order them? I just eyeball it and kind of know. That's I impressive. yeah, I don't pre-plan. Um like I don't know, I'll just calculate what I think I need and for the Minecraft video that I ordered 12,000 pieces for, it was a case of I found a store that had pretty cheap prices, but they were basically selling everything in the quantity that they had. Um so it was like you couldn't buy just one or two or three. It was like if they had 1,100 2 by 2s in gray, you had to buy 1,100 of them. Um which worked fine because I needed that many anyways. Oh, But, okay. um, yeah, otherwise it would have been bad. But for what I needed, it was good. And they had, like, basically every type of block in dark gray, gray, brown that I needed. So, like, I have a giant box that's, like, 24 pounds of just Lego. And there's, like, 1,100 2x2s in gray, like, 1,200 2x2s in brown. Like, just a bunch of block pieces for the Minecraft world, which is what I'm building. Well, that is seriously helpful then. I guess that ended up working out well. Yeah, but but for other situations, it's kind of like I, I just try and find a store that has mostly what I need. Um, but the nice thing about like if that doesn't work out, like for my video games in Lego, I needed like specific like printed tiles for the, the Flappy Bird. I don't know if you saw that. Um, I did. and so it was just a case of like priority ordering these not very cheap, not super expensive, but just like specific parts. And it wasn't a case of like. here's what else I could use on the BrickLink store to get better money for the amount I was paying for shipping. It was just like, I need these now, so I'll just order them because they have enough. Yeah, no, I get that. It was, you didn't have time to like check all the other stores. You're just like, no, I need this now. Give it to me. Yep. Uh, that's understandable. But hey, I mean, it seems to end up working out. So that's good. Yeah. So what inspired you to start your channel? Actually, it was Tiago Caterino. Really? Um, so he would upload his tutorials, obviously, and I, I found him at like probably 90,000 subscribers, and I was just like, this looks really fun. So I started with tutorials, um, did that for a while, then it kind of dwindled, and I was like, lost interest in the whole tutorial thing. I started doing like mock videos, you know, the generic like, I built, or not even the I built, like just like this. mock or whatever like something I know and then what you with mean. mock on the end those type of videos um and it wasn't a process video it was just like explaining at the end which is not a style that is very good for retention but um and then it kind of just like got to a point and i edited on my phone for all of these videos which Wow. wasn't great 
but the the very last video I edited on my phone was actually the flight simulator. And so after doing doing all these tutorials and just random videos and kind of like losing a complete sense of style, um, I just was like, okay, I need to edit a video good and like do it so it's going to do well, and it did. But yeah, I was just like, I saw Tiago, I liked what he was doing, and so I replicated it. I remember emailing him before I even had a channel, um, and he was nice enough to respond to that. Um, oh, that's awesome. But yeah, it was the main inspiration that, that started it, because I just liked watching the tutorials, and I was like, I'm a decent builder, I think I could just make my own. All right, I see. Man, that is so cool. I, I actually, I met Tiago Caterino not too long ago at the, the, the Lisbon Lego store opening. He was there and I got Oh, yeah. to talk to him with a bit. So that was pretty awesome. Yeah, I wondered. Yeah, yeah. I remember we got here and then, you know, I wasn't super aware of his channel like before then, but I think I just like discovered it and I was like, wait, he's in Portugal? Oh my God, what? No way. And then like for a while after we were here, I was just like, I hope sometime I just like run into him randomly. But no, it just ended up Yeah. being at the perfect place. So that was pretty cool. But Yeah, I was actually in that Lego store like a week and a half ago. Right. Oh my God. I can't believe it. I should have reached out to you earlier. My God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, well. Yep, we went to a Lego store in Spain and one in Portugal. Oh yeah. Did you go to Yeah. the Barcelona store? Uh, Sevilla. Sevilla. Okay. I didn't know they had one there. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it was a lot better than the Lisbon one, to be honest. Because Really? I was there for the pick brick wall. Um, Ah. Lisbon's pick brick wall was weird. Yeah, to be fair, it actually had some really good stuff in it, but recently, you know, with like the holiday season and all that, it was just Yeah, like, it wasn't they said too that good, they but haven't gotten their shipment, so. yeah, yeah, no, it's, it hasn't been great recently, but it, be, just because of that, but no, they've had like a lot of good like foliage pieces and like base Mm -hmm. plates and stuff like that, so it's, it's generally pretty good, but no, Yeah, it was just yeah. the timing, timing was off. Yep. But yeah, Tiago, anyways, he is, he's a really awesome guy. I was going to say, I think he's close to 1 million, right? Like, subscribers. Uh, he just hit like 400k. 400k, okay. Not, not quite as close then. Or, yeah, maybe it was 500. But yeah, not, not a million Never yet. mind. I thought he I'm was. sure he'll get there. <laughs> oh, definitely, no. His, his content is also great. And where would you like to see your channel go in the future? Honestly, I just want to keep making better videos, bigger builds, more complicated stuff, definitely a million subscribers, and in the long term, like, five million, who knows. Um, That but, is a good goal. yeah, I I think I can hit it. I, I obviously don't picture myself as, like, a 10, 20 million subscriber channel. I'm not saying it can't happen, but honestly, that's not the main goal for me. It's like, yeah, a million would be awesome, and I really want to hit it, but, like, once I'm... I'm there. I just want to have a steady channel with, you know, I, I want to be essentially the, the, the channel that people growing up now will one day say, I watched RJ and Bricks when I was a kid, that type of That thing. is... And just the, the household name in a way. That is such an awesome goal, man. That is so cool. I think you can definitely get there. I think if you keep at it, you're definitely on the right path. We'll see. Hopefully. And do you like see Lego, like, do, do, would you like it to be a part of your career in any way? I guess, you know, earning money from YouTube, you know, like monetization and all that. But anything beyond that, would you like to like do YouTube full time at some point or I plan to do YouTube full time as soon as I graduate high school. Um, I at this point don't plan to go to college and Okay. plan to just be a Lego YouTuber. And who knows, like one day I might switch and not completely switch, but do more just mechanical stuff. Like I'm sure you know Mark Rober. Um, Yeah. uh, just builds or like mechanical, like. actual things not made out of lego but for now it's it's gonna stick to lego and i'm just gonna grow as big as i can and do the best videos i can All right, that's awesome. So So you're into like, I guess, general engineering as well outside of Lego then. yeah well i guess i've always just had i've kind of thought in engineering in a sense like i've always thought mechanically and i don't know i just enjoy that type of thing design in general And so, I mean, yeah, I've, I'm taking classes at school that are like, 
you know, digital design and like fabrication and wood shop and stuff like that. So it, in, in non Lego aspects, yeah, I'm really interested in it too. But for me, the main medium is Lego and I don't know, it works well because it's yeah. small and you can do so much with it. Yeah, no, it's a great, it's a great way to, I guess, get really understand, I guess, engineering pretty well because it has like all the all the core stuff there and beyond even i mean yeah, for sure. stuff you can do with it is honestly quite insane it still surprises me to this day so yeah yeah it's quite impressive very much so i was gonna say i totally understand you about like not planning to go to college or anything i'm exactly the same yeah it's it wouldn't it's not my thing and i mean if i didn't have youtube i'd definitely go and probably do industrial design or something like that but because I have YouTube and I would enjoy it 10 times more than going to college, I that's just the plan. Exactly. No, once again, be able to being able to make a living off the thing you enjoy is the best kind of thing to do because then it's yeah. not work or at least isn't work as much. For sure. Man, that is absolutely fantastic. Yeah, and it's it's crazy to me what like opportunities open up from being a Lego YouTuber like the people, like, when people hear that, they obviously are like, what? Like, like immature, young, whatever. But, like, um, it's really quite insane to me, like, what can, what can come from being a LEGO YouTuber. Like, not just sponsorships, but, like, the amount of, of adults that watch me. And, I mean, it's not as much as kids, but, like, there's, there's people that just, like, are inspired by me building stuff. It's it's insane, really. It is. It's, yeah. It's just amazing. And I'm so glad that, like, you are, you're getting so much, I guess, like, positive attention from the stuff you're doing, and it's, like, really working out for you. But no, it just, there's definitely a lot of amazing opportunities that open up from just being in the Lego world and Lego YouTube and stuff like that. Do you plan, would you like at all to work for Lego as like a set designer or something like that? That was my like dream before and for a little while of YouTube. But the minute I started making money, I realized that it, it would suit me more and I could definitely make more than a Lego designer would. And obviously it's not just down to money. But it, it's at the point where it's like, I could work for myself, design whatever I want, get, you know, brand deals, whatever, um, subs, you know, whatever, that type of stuff. Or I could, you know, work for a company. And I absolutely love Lego. Like, I think it would be a really, really cool job to work and design sets. But I think in terms of, like, just the logic of it all, I think it would make more sense to be a YouTuber. Um... And I mean, I could always potentially like fall back on something like that if YouTube didn't work out. Um, but yeah, for now, I mean, it's I've ruled out set designer, oh, like for YouTube. But that was one of my like dreams for a while. Okay, I see. Yeah, honestly, I get you, man. Like for me, my personal dream is to become a Lego designer. But for you sure, make a yeah. really good point for yourself. You're like you know making money from YouTube and stuff like that, and. You know, once again, with the success that you have and things like that, it just makes a lot more sense to just work for yourself because you're making a good amount and we'll probably do more. And also you don't have to move to Billund. So that's, yes. you know, that's a pro as well. Yes, I actually have been to Billund and um, I've been to the Lego house and really? I mean, it's an awesome place. I absolutely love Denmark, but um, in terms of, of the logistics of moving completely to Europe, like... One thing, Denmark sales tax is extremely high, and right. stacked on U, uh, um, U.S. sales tax, because I wouldn't want to unbecome a U.S. Uh, member, because I don't think that would be the smartest thing. Um, it would be like seventy-five percent say like income tax, which just I don't think it would work. Even if I was making a ton on YouTube, like I just it would be hard to see seventy-five percent of your income just go away. Um, and yeah, I absolutely love Denmark, yeah. but I think I, I, at this point, I would just prefer to be a YouTuber and be able to travel and visit countries like that um, instead of moving there and then working for Lego. But yeah, definitely it gives you a lot more flexibility. That's for sure. Now, if they open a U.S. studio, 
Yeah. That's a different story. <laughs> I know, right? That would, I mean, like, at first when I was younger, I was like, why don't they, like, have more, like, um, I guess, like, Lego, like, headquarters around the world? Like, to me, that would make more sense. Yeah. I get what they're going for, like, the family vibe, and it's, like, in yeah. its place of it's origin. Like authentic. Exactly, right? And that's really nice that they do that. But would be nice to have some, you know, design centers other places in the world so everybody didn't have to move to Billund. And a large warehouse of all their pieces so we don't have to wait so long. Exactly. That would also be great. I, I will say, though, the thing that is probably pretty cool is that probably, like, a lot of the people in Billund are Lego people. So you're literally living among Lego people. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean... We were walking around the town after going into the Lego house. I assume you know what the Lego house is. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and there was, like, a stump outside for, like, kids to play on with, like, Duplo just sitting there. Like, they had Lego everywhere, and it was just, like, the thing that people play with when they're bored. Like, it's just, you know, Duplo for the kids, Lego, and it was just, like, everywhere. Like, that's what that town is basically built around, because Billund isn't a very big city. Like, it's not, like, a typical giant corporation where it's like in a big city you got tall skyscraper headquarters like it's pretty it's pretty uh localized and that's yeah, i don't know it's really town. cool we would see people like walk into a bakery wearing like lego uniforms like they worked there like a lot of people work there that is so cool yeah that that is one thing that i am looking forward to not not the cold part and obviously besides the awesomeness of working for lego but just being surrounded by just lego people and walking down the street and being like oh there is a Lego, there is someone who works for Lego, there's someone else who works for Lego. And it seems to really have just become part of the culture there, which is just so cool. Yeah, I mean, we literally saw like a yellow Lego branded semi truck drive down the road. That's so cool. <laughs> like, that is so cool. Yeah, it was awesome. I definitely want to go back. Yeah, I, I've been there like once. I was there for, I think, my 10th? birthday i don't remember but it was it was one of those but yeah i don't oh, yeah, think because you live a lot closer <laughs> yeah well i mean at the time i uh i didn't live i didn't live here but still i was you know oh. I, I was i was only in spain so you know not that far away but um yeah. yeah no i did visit there i don't think i don't think the lego house was open at that time but i did no it's pretty new yeah no but it, i did go there and i went to the the, the lego land there and stuff like that but it's definitely it's it's nice around there. Cold, cold. That's for sure. But you know, <laughs> yeah, it's worth it for the Lego. Of course, it's worth it for the brick. So, here's a question: How did you get into the Lego community, and more specifically, the T Fall community as well? Honestly, I am like not a huge. Well, I'm not like really in like the central like group of people and i'm not saying like there's a specific group of people i'm honestly more a, i don't know how to say this actually but it's more of a case of like i'm actually more interested which seems funny in like the youtube community than the lego community um i love lego but in terms of like lego for me it's just like i just like building it and i love seeing what other people build but i'm not like in a in a what do you call it? a lug or anything like that I see. um like i've never been in like a lego group or whatever it's kind of more of just like i always just played with lego that's like basically it i understand that but like you still like have a lot of like you know like mutuals in the lego world i assume and like people that you're friends with and stuff like that and that kind of like community thing no uh i think for the most part it's mostly lego youtubers that um i talk to when it when i'm talking to lego people yeah no that's that's pretty cool which are like some of the the people that you like i guess talk to like a decent amount in like the lego youtube world uh well my my most like w not well known but like the ones i know the best probably um i know brick science or like sacred bricks or td bricks like those are some of the the up and coming ones that really popped off last year. Um, Lego has been a, done really well last year, and those guys kind of did did really well. And so we like strategize or like talk about, you know, ask each other for help on thumbnails or whatever. And yeah, man, that's so cool. That's awesome that you guys like help each other out with just like all the little things that you need and things like that, like you know, thumbnails and coming up with ideas and stuff like that. 
Yeah. Man, that's so cool. Yeah, no, those guys, they did really, like, really well last year. They, I mean, I see, I think I'd been following TD Bricks for a while before that, but my god, like, him and, like, Sacred and all those guys got super huge. 2020, like, 2022 was, uh, I almost said 2021, because I'm still not fully, fully in 2023 <laughs> yeah. yet, still getting used to it. But now 2020, 2022 was a really good year for LEGO YouTube. It was. LEGO grew a ton in general but in terms of lego it became almost and not near as as huge but it became like a, a sort of minecraft in a sense where it was yes like you didn't have to play minecraft and you didn't have to be good at minecraft and you didn't have to be that like in interested in minecraft but minecraft was like the giant medium for builds for series for like you know worlds and just all that stuff and lego obviously cannot cannot come close to to representing something like minecraft did but like it just it's such a, a big medium and basically everyone knows what lego is whether or not they're interested in it um so it just it's it's more of a like a a storytelling form through lego and so it can interest people like there the goal i set out was was to be able to have people watch my videos even though they weren't really into Lego that much. And over the last year, there was tons of people that be like, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of Lego, but I love watching your videos anyways. Like, and that was basically the goal. And it kind of showed through in not just my channel, but all of those guys' channels that it just grew so much. And not just the Lego community, bit, but like it, it grew larger too and, and got huge. No, I totally agree with you. And I think that's why like, you know, like you and TD, um, Sacred, uh, Brick Science, all those guys. I think that's why you guys have, you know, why your channels have done so well because you've all really, you've done a, a style of Lego content that hasn't really been done much in the past before, which is like you said, uh -uh, yeah. doing videos that Lego fans can enjoy, but also people who aren't Lego fans can also enjoy and understand, right? Because I think, you know, a lot of the, the Lego world, the, the people, in the community, myself as well, we kind of make videos for other Lego fans. So we, you know, expect people to know like the yeah. general basic stuff at least. But you guys have all kind of, once again, made it so other people can get it. So that's just reached a much wider audience and it's just worked so well. Yeah, I think, I think kind of, um, I hate to, to sound like I'm crediting myself for this, but, um, Potentially my channel, like Ty and Sacred and uh, Riley, Brick Science, um, Generic Stud even, like all of these yes. guys. Like I think we like forced Lego to become mainstream last year. And like like in a sense, like we all started doing content that was so much better than what anyone had seen previously in the Lego community. It was kind of more nerdy, so more specific to lego fans whereas this is like it's just projects built out of lego like you can go to a channel and they'll build something out of wood or you could go to a channel and we'll build something out of lego like or like a clay channel like making clay projects or or an art channel like things like that where it's just lego has become one of the forms for that and i think last year was what really like forced that into existence yeah no totally once again, before that, most people were Lego fans making videos for Lego fans. You guys are Lego fans making videos for everybody that everyone can enjoy. And I'm surprised yeah. that, like, a, you know, I haven't really seen much content that, you know, has been kind of done in that style before you guys. So that's so awesome that you guys were able to kind of fill that empty space in the, I guess, the YouTube world generally. Yeah, and I think that's how people do best at YouTube is you can be in a niche but finding a way to make it enjoyable to everyone, not just that niche, is when you become successful. Definitely. That's good advice. So if LEGO were to start focusing on kind of teens more, like they have with this kind of adults welcome, you know, campaign and stuff that they've been doing, making, you know, like 18 plus sets and all that kind of stuff. If LEGO were to, I guess, do that for teens, like like the teen audience, what would you like that to look like? What do you think they could do for that? To be honest... 18 plus and that theme or the the adults welcome is kind of a teen theme too um and obviously like the whole age range that that lego has like the whatever like some say 8 to 99 and the whole joke that you can't be 100 and build a lego set or things like that um 
the their move for putting 18 plus on it wasn't that they didn't want people under the age it was just like trying to get adults to buy it um and i think most of those sets appeal to teenagers too um so i don't know like all of those sets all of the adults welcome sets usually are like my favorite sets anyways so like i don't know if there's anything specifically that they could make that would appeal even more to teens but i mean like maybe uh, mainstream themes that teens are enjoying like you know rather than i don't know i i think they're doing really well anyways but i don't know more game themes i i think would do well because i'm not a huge gamer myself but i know that a lot of teens um are into that as well and would definitely buy lego sets that are focused on a game they like No, I definitely agree that uh, I do think that, you know, while I don't, they obviously haven't gone like full into like specifically marketing towards like, you know, teens and stuff like that. I do agree that the 18 plus line does definitely fill that gap a little bit. It It's, you know, like higher end, more, I guess, less toy sets and more just like display sets or just cool looking sets generally. And Yeah. it does definitely fill that gap a bit. But I completely agree with you. about making like sets based on more i guess like current and relevant things like video games and stuff like that i really feel like they're missing out on that the horizon set the horizon zero dawn or forbidden west i guess set that they did that is amazing i'm like looking at the box right now i want to build it so badly but it is incredible i can't really believe that they did that and that is everybody's been well everybody was talking about that when it was revealed and i feel like Yeah. yeah Oh, I was just gonna say, I didn't know anything about that game. I didn't even know it existed, to be honest. But the minute that set came out, or when I first saw it, I was like, that looks really cool. I want it. Like, I didn't know about the game even, and I wanted it. Like, it's just, like, something from a game that's already so stylized and so well-made to, to appeal to people to play the game. It's just gonna look good in LEGO. Definitely. No, I completely agree with you. I knew about Horizon a little bit before, but not much. I still don't really know much about it. But I looked at those robot animals and was like, damn, those would be cool as Lego sets. And I Yeah. hope they I hope they keep doing it because it's it's great. But yeah, no, I think I mean, there's a lot of other things they could do, like, you know, like TV shows and like stuff like that. But a lot of teenagers are into video games. Not me particularly, but, you know, a lot are. And I think Yeah. doing that, doing sets based on popular video games could really fill that gap. And also plenty of adults would love that too. And it would get even more people into Lego and, you know, buying the sets for them, which is what they want. While I'm not a huge fan of Fortnite, I do feel like Lego should have done some sets on it. And they could have just either taken out the guns, because I know that's their whole thing, like it has guns, da 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 They did Overwatch. Overwatch has more realistic Yeah. guns, and it has slight blood effects. I, I mean, from what I know, Fortnite doesn't have slight blood effects, so it's No. cartoony and stuff like that, and they could just add, like, futuristic blasters and stuff, and once again, my experience with Fortnite is when it first came out, I went in, died immediately, never played again, but Yeah. I've seen it, and, you know, it, it fits with LEGO so well, so I think doing things like that and just other games that you know, obviously aren't like going over Legos, their standards, I guess, you know, like Yeah, I wouldn't yeah. expect them to do like Halo or things like that, but there's so many popular games that they could choose from and things like that. Yeah, and I have a hunch, can't say why I have a hunch, but I have a hunch that LEGO might do some Fortnite stuff in the future. Um, Some what stuff? I just, some Fortnite stuff in the future. I, I think that's coming. Um, Okay. it just, I'll leave it at that, but we'll see if I'm right, but Um, yeah, I definitely think it makes sense, and I mean, Lego, if anyone's going to do it, it shouldn't be the knockoff companies, because they all, you know, those builds kind of are a little cursed sometimes. They're horrifying. <laughs> but yeah, if, if, if anyone's going to do a, a good line of, of brick-built Fortnite, it's going to be Lego. Definitely I completely agree and once again, I'm not a fan of Fortnite But I would totally buy those sets just because they would look so like poppy and fun and the minifigures would be wild I think that would do great along with so many other things Cool pieces, too. I mean, they're doing Avatar stuff. Like, the pieces They from are that are they really, really cool. It is really expensive, though, and I would have to say Fortnite would probably be the same. 
But um, yeah, I mean, I think I, I don't have an avatar set, but they look cool. Definitely. I was so shocked when I heard they were making Avatar sets. Like, that is the last, one of the last things I would expect LEGO to make sets off of. Uh, 2009. People wanted it so bad. True, they did. And I'm glad they did it, because I, I watched the, the first one, uh, I think, just, like, last October. So, not that long ago, but, my God, they, they did really good. And I'm glad they did sets on the first movie, and then made sets from the newer ones as well the newer one yeah. as well that was that was a good move going back and making ones from the older movies but no they completely nailed yeah, it because they had a, a avatar line avatar Age the last Age. airbender yeah yeah um oh wait yeah yeah that's i know barely anything about shows so okay i'm a huge fan of avatar the last airbender the the show with like the elements and stuff like that and i would yeah. i would kill to get Avatar The Last yeah. Airbender sets. My god. It, the fandom is still super strong now. And my god, that would just be incredible. The sets that they did make were really bad and are now insanely expensive. So once again, yeah. if they did stuff like that, that would be pretty good. But no, the Blue People Avatar sets are, are pretty good as well. Yeah, I, I got them mixed up. <laughs> it's good. I, I think, I I think a lot of people either, do. So. I highly recommend seeing all of them. They're all great. All the Avatar stuff. Except... The Avatar The Last Airbender movie. Don't waste your time. That thing's awful. And I, I guarantee you that everyone will agree with me on that. So so Lego should make the, the sets based off the show, not the movie then? Yes, yes. Oh my god. That would be awful if they made sets based off the movie. But they are like making a, a new live action movie now that they have promised will not be bad. So we'll see. Maybe they'll make sets for that. But <laughs> Yeah. And then they also have the whole dreams thing coming, which... I'm so excited for that. I think what Lego should do is somehow... I don't know if you saw the leaks of the codenamed sets. I did. Um, I think what Lego should do is a bunch of stuff like that, and it's basically like a treasure hunt slash... Um, oh, what do you call it? Like a... a like an online um, treasure hunt, I guess. And whoever finds out what the theme is, the fir like first like wins the theme, like all of the sets or something, where you like oh my god, go through and it's a, like the publicity on that would be insane. And they could have code names for the sets, and you have to like figure out what each set is, and then like I don't know, piece it together somehow. But I I think it'd be cool if Lego did something like that because the publicity on the set. I mean, the sets would have to be really good, otherwise everyone would be underwhelmed and disappointed. But if they if they had a good theme, like I think doing some sort of like hunt for that would be really cool. That is an amazing idea, and I love that. That sounds like the stuff that they used to do back in like the early two thousands to promote themes and stuff. Like they mm -hmm. don't do that much anymore, and I think that would be so good for them, especially their original themes that don't have the, uh, I guess the mm -hmm. kind of backup of like an existing IP like Star Wars, Avatar, things like that. Yeah. That is an amazing idea, and I'd love to see that. Yeah, I think I I like marketing in general. Like, I find it very interesting. And I think that stems from me. I can My channel is basically a way to, to market and companies, obviously, sponsorships and whatnot. But I find it really interesting how, how that all works and, like, how people get you to buy products or all that type of stuff. Definitely. No, it's very interesting to look into. I was going to say, also, for anybody who doesn't know particularly... Um, the code names that like th that we have for the the themes so far are Sparkle, Titan, and Lemon. I'm pretty sure those are like the code names, and one of those is this Dreams line. I think it's Sparkle or something, but those are the the general code names that we have so far, and we've gotten code names for each of the sets as well. So that's something. Yeah, and there's I I think it might actually be Titan somehow that lined up, but um right um. The Titan leaks were like sp uh, shark ship and like something about um, violet mushrooms, which lines up with the whole portal thing. You're right. You're um, right. So so people are speculating that that's it. But either way, I think it's it's cool that Lego l lets that information out, even if they didn't mean to, because um, it it kind of builds up a a sense of trying to figure out what it is and like which is what and. The anticipation. Exactly. A, a sense of like a, 
excitement, I guess, anticipation, yeah. like you said. Yeah. I I mean, I have to admit, I kind of have a, a theory or I guess not a theory even. It's just I have a suspicion that a decent amount of leaks are actually on purpose by Lego because yeah. like the fact that they come out at the same time, usually all the time in such detail, it's like, okay, come on now, really? Like, I feel like they might be leaking stuff themselves, but you know. Yeah. I mean, it works. It works, yeah, no. It, but then when they get, you know, upset about it, it's like, okay, but like, maybe yeah. it's not them, but I think it might be. But I just have to say something that I found so funny about the dreams, like descriptions. So uh, for anybody who doesn't know, the idea of Lego dreams, so far from what we know, I'm, by the time this goes up, we'll probably have images for it. But um, we know that like it, it has something to do with dreams, obviously. There's like... It's kind of your general idea of like the two main characters, boy, girl, and there's I think it's like Izzy and I don't remember the guy's name right now. They have a they have like a sidekick Blob. called like Z Z Blob, Z. yeah, or something yeah. like that. And I think their science teacher or something is yeah. like their mentor. I think Magic and School Bus. Yes, it's kind of like Magic School Bus exactly. But what I found so funny about the descriptions is that they said that they enter dreams through a doorway that is sprouting purple mushrooms. Yes. I'm sorry. Dreams, mushrooms. Yep. People how, are talking about how, that. How they got that through, like, the whole, you know, like, process of, like, you know, I, I how they got that through. It's an adult's welcome I don't know theme, how. Didn't they tell you? <laughs> an adult's welcome theme. Exactly. No, it's, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's something I found I, that so funny. So yeah, something I think that would be really cool is an entire theme of kind of more the like adults welcome sets, because like we get themes like the dream set is obviously going to be a bunch of the the main character minifigures and like smaller sets with you know bright pieces and like buildings or like half buildings with the back that type of thing like Ninjago or Monkey Kid or that type of thing. I think it'd be really cool to get like like impressive like display pieces for an entire theme that's like yes. lego made up like dreams but like say there's i don't know like because they probably do like a bigger set that's like the world of dreamland or whatever you want to call it and i think yeah. like that but like adults welcome like some really big display like those type of things where it was like obviously to buy the entire theme would be really expensive if they did something like that but i think it would just be cool and they probably won't ever because of the cost, but it would just be really cool. I agree. I really feel like, you know, they. I, I agree with you that they should do a kind of adults welcome, like, overall theme. And I think that would do really well. And, you know, what would be pretty cool is if they did it on a more adult-based property, because the 18 plus sets aren't really based on much stuff that's more mature, I guess. It's more just like, hey, this is this is more like a display thing or it's more complicated or whatever. But I think that would be cool. And my God, they've done they've done sets from movies and shows and content and stuff like that that is not eighteen plus like sets, but has very interesting content. That's for sure. They've done it before, so they yeah. could totally do it, and they'd have it would be justified by putting the eighteen plus thing on it. So, you know. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of the whole like, like um, set sets where it's like a set of a show. Um, yeah. I mean, The Office was highly anticipated. I mean, I've never seen any of the shows anyways, but... Um, Same here. <laughs> yeah, the, they're they're kind of cool for, like, custom printed pieces and, like, a bunch of unique, like, elements. But other than that, they're kind of just, like, minifigures. And I totally get why they're doing it for people who like the, the shows. But for me, I, I prefer, like, you know, chunky, like, lots of pieces, like, the, the 18 plus, like, the piano or... I, I went to the Lego store. I have the the Mighty Bowser and then Assembly Square that I bought um, that I haven't built yet, but, like, those type of sets, um, which are really cool. I, I agree. I, I see what you're saying there. I mean, personally, I, I don't particularly mind the more, the, like, sitcom sets and stuff like that, and while I'm not a fan of any of them, I'm glad that Lego is, you know, listening to yes, the fans yeah. more, so at least than they do usually. Um, Except the but, yeah, fact it that they're be... making a BTS set. Oh my god, I forgot about that. <laughs> I yeah, that's funny. We'll see how I, I was I don't so think it's go well, but... shocked. I think it's gonna do extremely well, honestly. Oh, I think it's you gonna kidding? do well. 
for non Lego fans that like BTS, but for Lego fans, I'm not so sure. Yeah, I don't know. I have a feeling I'm going to be getting it just because I think it's going to be a really cool looking set. Like, I'm not a BTS fan. I mean, I like a, a few of their songs are catchy, and I will admit I do have Butter and Dynamite on my playlists, but that's it. Yeah, that's it. That's like the but, only songs anyone really knows of them. Yeah, no, I'm. I was so shocked when they revealed that that was one of the chosen sets. I was like, "What? And it's BTS? Hard to are you serious? What's gonna come of that? Because the source image or the um, the Lego idea submission is not like good looking, to be honest. I mean, it's a it's, bare bones one. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of funny how that one like gets through, and then like some really detailed stuff. I mean, I get that it's the IP stuff, but that one just is kind of underwhelming in terms of the original build. Um, especially on terms of building technique, it's kind of more just like methodical, here's that we need a wall here type of thing, like a donut or whatever. Like there's not like special techniques used, but I'm sure Lego designers will put that into it. I'm really excited to see the prints that they do for the minifigures and if they make new hair pieces to yeah. be more accurate to, to theirs because that's I'm excited for that. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens. I think I'm actually going to delve back into Lego Ideas eventually. Really? I, I feel like it makes sense. I mean, I feel like I could get to 10k pretty easily if I just put it in a video. And, oh, yeah. So, yeah. Definitely. I'm, I'm thinking, I don't know if you saw the monorail slash train video. I did. Um, But I think what I'm going to do is turn that into a small loop. Um. Or not turn it into, but build another small loop um, and turn it into a more stylized set and then have the monorail be like an idea set. Because um, I think idea. people like trains and it could be something that you could buy more of to expand or whatnot. So, Definitely. and honestly, although not... the. Oh, go ahead. No, 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 no. So you're going to say. I was going to say, I'm not too worried about like the fact that it might not be that great of an idea for a Lego idea set. I just want to get something to 10K, to be honest. Like, no, I totally get you. I'm not sure if you know this because I didn't until recently, but apparently even if you don't like get selected for your set to be made, oh, yeah. everybody who hits uh, 10K gets a free $500 yep. gift yeah. card for Lego. So, yeah. I remember I – because you have to be 13 um, to submit projects. I remember I was 12 when I found out what Lego Ideas was. Um, or actually, I was younger, but I didn't know there was a website, and I, I saw it in, like, a, a catalog, and I was like, how are you going to get 10,000 votes? Like, do you, like, put up signs around your city? And, like, I didn't know it was a website. I was, like, so confused. It's like, well, no one's ever going to have that happen. Um, and before that, I thought LEGO Ideas was just, like, designers, like, official LEGO designers who just had a cool idea and made a different set. Um, but, oh. yeah, when I found that website, I, I finally turned 13, and then I was, like, going to do this, and I read through, like, the prizes and the compensation and the then I was like the five hundred dollars like I gotta get that yeah it'd be really cool. That's awesome. I know I think you should definitely do it. I you know the funny thing about ideas is that when I was younger I wanted to to put like an up an idea set and I still do at some point. Um, it was gonna be like a Chima set. It was uh, it was like a troop carrier. It was really bad. But anyways, um, I thought you had to be eighteen or over. To do it. I didn't realize it was 13 until LegoCon 2021. And when they announced one of the winners, and he looked like, you know, he was like, what, 14 maybe? He's the one who designed the foosball table, the original one. Really? I was like, he wait was a 14? second. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know his exact age, but he definitely didn't seem like he was over 18. And at this point, I still thought that, you know, the the age the, the age requirement was 18 or over. So I was like, wait, what? And then I looked, and I saw that you just have to be 13 or over. And I was like, are you serious? I could have been submitting sets this entire time. And I was waiting yeah. till I was 18. My God. So, yeah, that's that's a, yeah. a little funny thing. I looked I it up. He was 16. but Oh, he was 16. Okay. But still, like, that's such an impressive thing. And I honestly, I, I feel like um, if I don't overdo it, like, at this point, um, whatever I put on there, I feel like I have enough of an audience to that I can get it to 10K. Um Definitely. And I'm I'm not just gonna put stuff on there just to get it to 10k, but I feel like um it's just like a, a cool way that people could connect and be like, this YouTuber also has designed this set and I, I think it would go both ways to, to supporting the set for on Lego's end because my fans or 
I hate calling it that. My viewers would, um, you know, want or potentially want the set and know that it was designed by me, but also like maybe people would see the set was designed by me and go check out my channel or whatever. Exactly. Plus it would just be like a childhood dream come true. Oh, totally. Right. And then also you wouldn't have to go and work for Lego to get a set designed. So like, yeah, that's great. And I with the do whole have to admit... designer program. Mm, exactly. Aren't they well, opening that up? Know. Uh, I was gonna say, aren't they opening up the Bricklink Designer program to not just like n unapproved um, idea sets, but aren't they just letting you submit builds now? I think, if I'm not I'm mistaken. Not sure. Because I went onto Bricklink a few days ago, and they were advertising the designer program, but they were like telling you to make builds for it. So I was like, oh, what's this? Yeah, I think it's cool how they're opening that up, and I mean, obviously Lego owns Bricklink, so it's a smart move on their end, but. Yeah. Um, yeah, just having a Lego set in general would be really cool. And, I mean, one day, I think, I don't know, Lego isn't particularly, like, YouTube geared yet in the term of promotion, no. sponsorships, all that stuff. I mean, they've done no. a couple people, but it's, it's like, non-Lego creators, like, Unspeakable or Dan TDM, where it's, like, they're not Lego creators, they're right. just huge, and they have young audiences, so it makes sense. But I, I think eventually... Um, they'll get into, you know, larger Lego creators. Because it seems like they've got LAN going on, which is for, like, small, like, channels that just do reviews and all upload the same video on the same day, releasing a set, of, like, review. And then they've got, like, occasional, like, really big sponsorships with giant channels. But there's, like, no in-between with, like, you know, me or Ty or Sacred or, you know, those those size channels where it's, like, um, there's no one really like Lego isn't really sponsoring that that type of channel, which really? I mean, it it might be that we're I don't know, not what they want to sponsor, but I just think eventually Lego will get to the point where it's like start sponsoring like YouTube channels besides LAN. Yeah, that's really interesting. I didn't really realize that. I mean, I think I can't remember any off the top of my head now. I think I have seen a few like in in the middle channels that are part of land, but I mean they say as long as you just you know as long as you have the set involved in what you're doing somehow it counts. So you don't necessarily have to do a review. Apparently you can do like I don't know you can like have it on a live stream or have it be part of something that you're doing or something like that. So that yeah that is pretty good. You can kind of, you don't have to just do a review and then you know send it out. But no, I I do agree that it doesn't. I mean, maybe that's just because, like, I guess, you know, like, TD Bricks and, you know, Sacred Bricks and people like that, maybe they just haven't applied to LAN. I'm not sure if they have, but no, you're right. A lot of yeah, those I didn't guys. Yeah, I mean um, LAN. I meant, like, like traditional YouTube sponsorship where it's like. Oh, okay. Sorry. I didn't get what you're saying there. No. In in that case, traditional YouTube sponsorship sponsorships. I agree. It's It's like the. The, the big channels like Dan TDM, Unspeakable, people like that, definitely. Yeah. And, I mean, me, Secret, um, I think Riley, um, Brick Science, um, and Ty are old enough, but neither of us are 18. So you have to be 18 ah. for LAN, um, which, I mean, it, it makes sense. But also, I mean, we have a lot bigger channels than a lot of the, like, LAN people. So our reach would be bigger. But I wouldn't join LAN even if I could because it would just put more of a limit on my channel than help it. I mean, free sets, yeah, but I can just buy the sets when I need them for the video and not be, like, locked into whatever set they give me. Exactly. If you're making your own income, then, like, you just put that back into your channel and it's just a constant cycle of, like, yep. it, it uh, fueling itself, I guess. So that makes sense. And it's a case of, like, I, I can see myself potentially, like, if I if I graduate and I'm in the process of making a studio right now, but um, if I graduate and like I have a second channel that I don't do anything on, but um, like I could potentially be on LAN for that channel where I just did more of like a a set type of thing, set related content. But for for now, I I just it's not my interest. Like I like buying sets and building them, but I don't want to like re make reviews because for me, and again, it's not the same for everyone. So it's it's totally cool that people can do that. But for me. A set review is not a good video, in my opinion. Like, I enjoy watching them occasionally, 
But in the case of like getting views and growing my channel and making good content, like you cannot expand past the Lego community if you're just making reviews. So I would put more of a limit on my channel than than help it really. No, I totally get that. I think that's a smart decision for sure. I mean, maybe like, like you said, like something with like the other channel, like if you dedicated it to like, you know, like speed builds or something like that and just put all that stuff there, like maybe that, that would work. But no, I, I agree that it's, it's a good, good idea to stick with what you're doing. I think that's going to be much better, a lot less limiting. That's for sure. Yeah. And also you don't have to pretend like leaks don't exist. So that's good. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yep. My God, I find that so funny when, when like people in LAN are like, um, yeah, you know, they're obviously like, like they're not even really trying to hide it, but they're like, yeah, what's set? What leaks? I don't know about any leaks. Like, Yeah. yeah, no, it's quite funny. Yeah, and I'm like not... a huge part of the the specifically lego community in terms of like leaks and like what sets are coming out and all that stuff like if i get a set i just think it looks cool to be honest like and i'm more like i i tracked like when the new modular came out and everything um because that's the type of set i will definitely buy because modulars are awesome um but but in terms of like The new theme, it's like, yeah, I'll like look it up and see if it's come out, but it's not like I'm see searching for leaks or like, um, like tracking necessarily. So I, I think honestly, for me, it's more of the YouTube community than the Lego community that I'm like active in, I guess you'd say. Yeah, no, I definitely understand that. You're less into the, I guess, like just the buying and building of the product and more the creating your own thing with it, right? Yeah. Definitely. I get that. That's awesome. So what do other people say when you tell them that you're, you, when you tell them about your Lego passion, that you're a Lego fan and stuff like that? What, what's their reactions usually? Well, I mean, I typically lead with the YouTube part because that's less of a you're still in the Lego situation, you know what I mean? Um, Yeah. um, but yeah, I I think people's initial reactions are like, like if I say I'm a, a Lego YouTuber or I have a Lego YouTube channel, they'll be like, oh, he's he's trying, you know, maybe like Right. 100, 100 subs or like that type of thing where it's like, no, it's like, actually, I am a Lego YouTuber. Um, and when people realize that, it's like, whoa, wait a minute. Um, definitely something that becomes impressive. But yeah, I typically lead with like YouTube rather than Lego. <laughs> I see. So is it like you, like, you know, when it comes up, you mentioned that you have a YouTube channel and then mentioned that it is Lego related? Uh, I mean, I say, well, well, yeah, I guess I'll, they'll, I'll be like, I'm a YouTuber. Um, and they'll be like, oh yeah. Or like ask, ask how many subs? Cause obviously they want to know that. Um, I mean, I would too, if I said someone Yeah. said they were, you know, a YouTuber, but, and then they'll be like, what do you do? And then I'll be like, I typically say like, I build mechanical, um, things with Lego. Um, cause I, I also think the mechanical helps make it seem a little more, um, not smart, but, um, I don't know, like not just like building random stuff on, Exactly. on YouTube and they, they typically are like, don't understand how that works. Um, well, it depends on the generation too, but like older people or middle-aged people will be like, do you just like take videos of you building and like speed builder or something? And, and I'll be like, no, it's actually a lot more complicated than that. Um, but yeah, um, I'm not at all embarrassed about it. Um, That's good. it's, I'm glad. it's, I mean, I, I am embarrassed about my past self that wasn't embarrassed because I would be like, like every, young teen with a YouTube channel. Like, it wasn't, you know, like, hey, guys, I have a YouTube, like, go, like, Yeah, you know, that, that, spam that's your, me like, about leading it. statement Um, when you meet people. Like, hi, I have a YouTube channel. My name is... <laughs> yeah, and, I mean, I, like, got in my school's, like, n video newsletter about it, and, Wow, that's I mean, cool. which is, at the time, was, like, the coolest thing, and I got, like, 30 subs in one day, and I was just shocked. Um, but now it's, like, I don't really tell people unless... I mean, other people will tell other people, like, um, and then they'll be like, you're the YouTube guy, right? And I'm like, yeah, and that's, that's fine. But, um, yeah, it's just like, I don't typically tell people as much now unless it becomes a topic. And I think now that I'm like, so to speak, a successful YouTuber, it's like, if I bring it up, it feels a little more like a flexing rather than 
<laughs> like spammy about like I need more subscribers, go subscribe. Um, you know. So it's just no. yeah. I get that. I get that for sure. But I mean, when people ask you like what's your job, you can it's not even flexing. It's just like, yeah, I do YouTube, Lego YouTube, yeah, I, make, yeah. I make money from it. So yeah. Yep. And I mean, yeah, it's like and people underestimate how much you make and like that it's an actual job. Like they'll just assume like, you know, a couple dollars or whatever from AdSense or whatever. Because, I mean, people have, most people have never been monetized, have never seen that side of it. So, and YouTubers typically don't like outright say how much they're making. So you assume that someone you meet just like at school or something isn't going to be making a bunch of money off YouTube because that's kind of rare. Um, but yeah, I do. It's like my job is YouTube. I don't have another job. It's like I'm a YouTuber, which is even weird for me to think about. <laughs> really? Yeah, I like, I don't know. It was like the dream. And, I honestly didn't even know being a YouTuber was a thing until, like, I started my channel, which is kind of where I'm different than a lot of people my age. It's like you've had a channel or multiple channels or just tried and tried and tried and, you know, made videos. But, like, I just kind of started and always... I didn't always know what I was doing, but I always, like, could, f like, learn about retention and and all that stuff. And I, I didn't, like, start realizing it immediately but then I like joined a server with some other youtubers that were a lot bigger than me at the time and it was just like talking to them and realizing there's a lot more than just uploading a video oh yeah and and there's a lot that goes into it and now I like to think that I'm decent at it <laughs> I'd say I'd say a little bit more than decent but yeah <laughs> yep it's ever changing exactly but now I think it's a great job to have, you know, you work for yourself and you get to yeah. make money doing the things you love. So it's fantastic. Yep. And in the case I needed to be, I can use it as a flex. <laughs> exactly. Right. It's a, it's a good, it's a good flex to have. I'd say, I, I think it's a, a very respected flex among our generation, you know? Yeah. It's like rare to find someone who actually has the successful YouTube channel. And I mean, if people are like, doubting me i can literally just pull it up and they'll be like stunned so i mean exactly you can just go like for chow look at the subscribers yep. look at the views <laughs> yeah and i mean like i i had someone in one of my classes uh last school year um that we would like track how many views my video had gotten and like talk about it um and i remember that was like when my my best video it was the piston it's at like 6.4 million now but um wow oh, yeah that's incredible that was, it's it's just slowly gotten more views but at the time it was like i had a a deal i was like if this video gets three million views you, it was like you owe me a dollar but if it doesn't you know whatever um yeah just for fun but we would like track it and it slowly got near it and i, I mean it's crazy how things double too like over time like give it seven months and it'll have double the views if it's a good video like oh yeah it just slowly over time gets views but yeah I, I think generally it's like because i have as many subscribers and the views i do have like people aren't gonna you know tease me about it or like whatever whereas like small channels like and i don't think it's something you should be teased about anyways because um you know but i i, th I think people do kind of stop and think and like wait he's actually like a successful youtuber not just someone trying to be a youtuber definitely it's it's good that you know you've actually had a lot of success with it once again i think it's more difficult for people when they've just started out and it's like you know like i don't know like 20 subscribers and people are like yeah sure you know yeah but i agree i was gonna say have you like ever gotten like any like ne negative reactions from like saying that you've either that you're a Lego fan or from the YouTube thing still, even if they see like the, you know, the amazing stuff you're doing and things like that. Uh, there's nothing that stands out as like, that was a bad moment, but I mean, it's not, no, not really. I guess people are just usually impressed and surprised. Um, I can't think of any moment that's like trying to embarrass me about it or anything. And if they do, it's like, 
look at the numbers. Like, you can't really <laughs> tease someone who is actually doing YouTube. Um, oh, yeah, no. Especially, like, when you're making, like, when you're flipping making money from it, it's like, what is there to tease me about? It's working, so, like, what's, yeah, what's your mean, problem? I'll joke with my friends about, like, I'm a Lego YouTuber and I make money off, like, 12-year-olds, but... Um, <laughs> I, I, I don't there's nothing like it, I think it's funny too it's like my audience is really young yeah but like it's just cool to be honest no definitely it is it is so damn cool I agree all right so do you have any lego hot takes or unpopular opinions honestly I don't know I'm like not that in with the like I don't really like hate on themes or like have anything I just really don't like about Lego. I'm kind of just like over here being a fan, you know? Um, yeah, but I don't know. Like I mostly am impressed with what they come out with and yeah, I don't know. I, I think some of the, well, no, to answer your question, not really. <laughs> okay. That's cool. I get that. Hmm. Okay. I am gonna. So, do you do you buy Star Wars sets at all? I have one Star Wars set, I think, and I got it at a garage sale. So, no, that's probably why I don't have hot takes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, because I was gonna ask if you put the the lightsaber blade into the handle, like with the thinner side, or like if you put it in the thinner side or the thicker side, because that's a whole point of contention and stuff like um, that. I would put it on the side without the two rings. Side without the two... Wait, hold on. The side with the little four beams sticking up. You'd put it on this side? Yep. Oh my god. How could you? Actually, now that I picture it, I don't think I would. <laughs> no, no. This is, I was picturing uh, that side thicker. Okay. No, that definitely okay. makes more sense. I just feel okay, like those four good. beams or the four little bars at the bottom... They look like they'd be like channeling some sort of energy or something. I don't know. I I've do agree. Also, never seen Star Wars, so what? <laughs> I've You've seen never... one Marvel movie, and that's it. Oh my, my god! Movies and shows. Okay, wow. That, I mean, that's not many unpopular or like unpopular opinions or hot takes on Lego, but I see that's definitely a just a controversial life choice at the moment. Yes. I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow, that is. I understand that. Gets that gets an though. even more surprised reaction than the fact that I have 300,000 subscribers. You have never <laughs> seen Star Wars. <laughs> exactly. No. <laughs> it's like, yeah, 300,000 subscribers? That's pretty cool. You haven't seen Star Wars? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I haven't seen Harry Potter, Star Wars, any DC movies. I've seen one Marvel movie. Okay. So that's I my... understand that. I haven't seen any of the Harry Potter movies yet because I'm reading the books first because I feel like oh, that's yeah. just the way you're supposed Definitely. to do it. Yes. It's taken me so long and I'm restarting again because I forgot everything that happened before. But anyways, yeah, no, I, I watched the Star Wars movies like when I was, I think, like 12-ish, but I only recently saw all the Marvel movies. Like, I think it was like 2021, like by by the end of it, all I'd seen was like Thor Ragnarok and like one or two others but it's only yeah. in recent years i've actually caught up with it but yeah I, I i understand that for sure do you want to watch the star wars movies or marvel movies or anything like that not really no i mean the no. one i saw one spider-man one and it was on the plane um and i enjoyed it i thought it was really good but also Which one like, was it uh the one with uh mysterio Spider-Man Far From Home. Okay, with Tom Holland. Okay, yeah. yeah. The one where he's on a trip. Anyways. Um, yeah, I, I thought it was a good movie. And, I mean, I don't have anything to base it off of either. But yeah. I don't, like, come, I, there's the part of me was like, ooh, now I'm going to want to watch him. But, I mean, I got home and forgot about it. And it's like, now I don't care. So, okay. I, I mean, yeah, I don't. And I've never seen a Star Wars movie. So, it's like, I don't know what I'm missing out on. So, okay. I don't have the yearning desire to go watch all the star wars movies plus that would take but, a long time i mean it would take less time than watching all the marvel movies that's true yeah no i understand that i, I can respect that i would recommend that you watch it, especially the star wars movies but you know if it's not your thing then that's fair 
But hey, that saves you. That saves you from the pain of collecting Marvel sets because there are some great ones like like this one right here that, I've, that one the people watching cool, yeah. the people watching can't see it, but I'm pointing at the 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 Guardians ship, aka the Benatar. They've been doing good ones recently, but overall, it's yeah, it's iffy. And, and same Star with Star Wars. Is so expensive the sets. Oh boy, yeah. And now they like upped the price even more, and it's yeah. I'm glad I don't collect Lego Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just get cool sets like that I feel like are cool, and it doesn't really matter the theme. If I think it looks cool, I buy it. Yeah, that's that's pretty much my thing as well. And and like um, for the Lamborghini, I was just like probably watching a speed build of it one day, and I was like, I want to build a gearbox. Um, and it was just like interesting to me because it has like functioning everything. Um, so I came home, and at the time, like four hundred dollars for a Lego set was like, eh, you know. But I, I asked my mom, I was like, if this video gets a million views, can I buy the Lamborghini? And so that's the one that has 6.3 million views. So Oh, damn. Um, that, was a, that was a good yeah. video to choose. Yeah, I got the Lamborghini. That is that is awesome, man. That's clever, making making a bet with your mom like that. I'm, I'm going to take, take that advice. I'm going to take that, uh, that yeah, technique. Yeah, and I mean, it... It, like getting a million views basically meant that I would make the money from the video to pay for it. Really? So like, okay, that's good. So it wasn't like I was just blowing four hundred dollars. Like I said in the video, if this video gets a million views, I'll buy Lamborghini. So it was kind of like people could like track it and be like, "Is he gonna get it?" And I got I get comments still on my videos occasionally that are like, "Where's the Lamborghini?" You're like, "Did you get the Lamborghini?" Oh my god! Um, even though it's been what like eight months, but I I. I guess I didn't realize it, but it was probably somehow a some sort of engagement hack. Yeah, no, definitely. Like that makes sense. I I'll have to do the that. Eiffel Tower next. Oh my god, do you actually plan on getting that set? I want it, but I don't know. It's a lot of money. You do okay. I just find it funny that that set is pretty much as tall as some people. Like that's I... that's insane, oh. and it's. Storing it would be a difficulty for sure. Yeah, just just a bit, you know. <laughs> but I mean, I take it apart anyways. So, Re really, you take that apart? Yeah, there's a lot of gray pieces I could use. True, I guess so. But my God, that seems like such a repetitive build. Oh yeah, for sure. But it just—I I mean, I would probably get the Titanic first, like over the Eiffel Tower. That one looks really cool. But... Actually, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna think about that. Maybe I'll be like, if this video gets three million views, I'll get the Titanic. Definitely, I still have find the, it, the hmm. Have to make it difficult goal to meet. <laughs> Definitely, I was gonna say, do you like? So you're saying about people commenting, like, um, you know, like, do you, do you, uh, did you get the Lamborghini and stuff like that? Do you like ever get people like, can you give me a shout out or things like that? I mean. I can't read all the comments to be honest, and those ones yeah. don't usually get pushed up to the top. But I'm I'm I've seen them, yeah, and I definitely do get those. Or like if I okay. live streamed, but um, I mean I'll get Discord DMs of like shout out. Yeah, but, yeah, not too by much. By the way, then. that's good. Yeah, yeah, for anyone watching this, do not DM me with some random like spam. If you want to talk to me, just like send one message that's like, hey, I like your stuff or something like that. Like, not just for me, but for any creator, if you want them to respond, I mean, obviously not like famous, like we're celebrities, but YouTubers just yeah. like saying like one thing where it's just like, hey, you inspire me. Hey, I like your videos rather than, oh my goodness, like respond, respond, please, please. Like that type of thing. It's just like, don't be spammy. Exactly. That. I completely agree with that. The best way to get to like reach out to someone like that is by just like a nice message like that, like "Hey, love your stuff" or something like that, or even I guess even a longer message, just saying you're really inspiring. Just something nice. Don't, don't, don't be asking for shout outs or if they can follow you back or things like that. You know, that's yeah. you're yeah, they're just gonna ignore you if you do that. Request. But I also haven't like, <laughs> promoted my Instagram much, so okay. Yeah, it's I haven't posted or like ha uploaded a video since then so i might mention it in the video but i don't really care i'm my main focus is youtube so i mean it's I, like usually people like myself included use instagram for like promoting their videos but you don't seem to need that seem to be doing just fine without it
maybe I should try and do even better, but we'll see. Maybe, maybe. All right. So what was your first substantial mock that you can remember? That's hard. You I know, have so not like, a clue. so like substantial is in like the idea that like it wasn't, you know, like when you were four and just like shoving bricks together, but like the first, Yeah. like, you know, proper build that you tried to do. I mean, I was never the type to like build houses out of like two by like random colored pieces. So like Oh, yeah. my original builds were always kind of substantial mocks, but like obviously not well built ones. But um, I like to think that I was a decent builder even when I was younger. Like I, I never like just like I would always like build a house or like, you know, I built like a full on modular once. Actually, we'll just go with that Nice. one as my first substantial one. I built like a custom modular and it was Oh, really? called the shark board shop. Because the, like, the sign out front, um, it was like an REI inside. Um, I don't know if you know what an REI is, actually. Um, U.S. store, it's like a um, outdoorsy kind of store, like bikes, hiking stuff, like Mm -hmm. skiing, Okay. like that type of thing. Yeah. And I, I built something like that with the, the pieces I had, to, because I guess I just had a lot of pieces like that, bikes or surfboards or whatever. And the, the sign out front that I made was a, like a shark biting the surfboard, so I called it the shark board shop. Um, But yeah, I, I ran out of pieces on that one, and I was sad. But that was probably the first one that I was like, wow, this I'm actually like, this looks good. And I might not think that now, but... Oh. <laughs> How old are you when you built that? <laughs> oh, probably like 10, maybe. Okay. That's Maybe younger. I don't really remember. That's pretty cool. Man, I I don't don't think you usually hear about people's first substantial mocks being like, you know, an attempt at like a modular. So that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, and I uh, there might be stuff before that I can't remember. I can picture like some sort of house, but it didn't have a roof, and it wasn't probably very good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they would get very wet I used inside to, if it rained. yeah, I used to have a video of the modular, but it's gone now. So, Really? Ah, oh, you got rid of it? yeah. Man. Did you, like, d like delete it, like, off, like, your device, or you mean, like, it's not on, like, you had on YouTube and you got rid of it? No, off my device. I it was. Ah, yeah, That was okay. before I had a YouTube channel, so. Yeah, but, like, sometimes people have, like, their own personal ones before, and they, like, upload things Yeah, to that. that's true. Okay, that sucks, man. Yeah, and I, I can, like, kind of picture it, but not really. Yeah, I, I think I get I want that. to, I want to come up with a way, and obviously I'm building my city, um, which is a mechanical city, so, like, skyscrapers will have working elevators, airport will have a working plane. Oh my god, how are you going to do that? How are you going to do a working Not plane? flying, but, like, the landing gear and motors and flaps should be working. Okay, Um, I see. You just have a catapult that just... <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I, that was my, my way to, to do something I really wanted to do, which was build a city, and also keep my mechanical theme, and also not just start doing city updates, which is how I fall off, so to speak, um, because, you know, it's so niche doing, like, city update 12, adding cars, that
<laughs> really? So wait. Oh, right. Okay. So I thought you meant the whole city for a second. I was like, no, no, that no. Uh, because yeah, the monorail exactly. Way than Lego would do. Imagine. Yeah, but I, 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 I can picture like, um, like two straight track pieces and then a corner and then one straight track piece and then a corner and then two. So like an oval loop. Um, and then have a smaller station, and then like on the bottom have little patches of grass where each pole is, rather than giant base plate, because that'd be more Lego setish. Um, and then I don't I don't know if that would do well as a set to be honest, and I don't know that Lego would choose it, but I mean, I just want 10k votes. I want to see it like finish. Definitely, it's it's worth it just for that alone. But I mean, I think people would want it because people, the monorail fans are wild and you know the original the train, pieces yeah. for that yeah train monorail fans things like that they're yeah they want more um, of it yeah and i mean i think i might throw that into the 100 mechanisms video because it's another mechanism i can use so i might um because obviously it makes sense to like make the the lego ideas project live at the same time as a video so that all the hype from the video goes to the project like if i made the monorail now and just didn't talk about it in a video or anything it would be kind of just supporting itself only on lego ideas um but if i like make it part of my next video and turning it into it like it just be a segment of the video I, I think that would be something that could work so we'll see i think that's very clever once again you're, you're driving the traffic of the excitement of it over to ideas while it's relevant for yeah. the for the viewer watching yeah, and like we were talking about um, making or like basically figuring out a way to make something fit my channel, like the the city. I also want to build some custom modulars, um, maybe like five different modulars that are custom for like a video. But I haven't come up with a way to like turn them into a mechanical thing or like and it doesn't necessarily have to be mechanical because I've proved no. like my second most viewed video isn't mechanical stuff. Um so it it doesn't have to be mechanical. Um, and I think for modulars, I'd make that exception just because I would use, like, fancy techniques to make them look good. Um, but, yeah, we'll see. Lots of ideas floating around. Definitely. That is exciting. That's good to hear that you're not just restricted to only doing mechanical stuff, that you still can do, like, you know, your own kind yeah. of, like, just normal mocks and things like that. Yeah. No, that's that's good. I, I do hope that that would, you know actually like get made because that would be that'd be pretty cool ideas is kind of weird with like with like trains and modulars for some reason but i think the monorail could do it yeah they don't do modulars because they do one a year and they don't really want to mess with that um exactly. which i understand and i wouldn't do a modular on lego ideas um but i think the monorail is something that people would like um because train fans there's a lot of lego train fans and We've gotten some more trains, like the Crocodile Locomotive yeah, um, and the Hogwarts Express, which everyone seems to hate. And from my perspective, as not a train fan, I think it's just cool. But um, Me too. Um, but the whole, like, using track pieces, and then that could be so easily expanded. Like, you know, Legos just, by by making that, they potentially could just be getting people buying multiple of those and could potentially make, like, an expansion pack where it's, like, you know, you buy or the set and it's just like, because obviously the monorail has like a beam underneath it. So it's not just the track piece. And so you couldn't, I mean, you could just buy track pieces and extend it that way. So there's a lot of ways it could go. And I think it would be in Lego's benefit because people would buy pieces for it. But yeah, and I would get 10 of them free if it made a set so I could make a giant one. <laughs> exactly. I forgot about that. <laughs> or give nine of them away in a video or something. True, you could use some of them for like giveaway prices. That's a that's a good way of getting more like engagement. Especially since it'd be my own set. Yes, exactly. But no, I think that's a good idea. I you know, good luck with that when you submit it to ideas. I hope I hope it hits ten thousand at least. Preferably gets made into a yeah. set. Yeah, that would be really awesome. And if not, five hundred dollars. <laughs> exactly. Still not too bad, right? Yeah. Okay, so you did a really interesting video, which was counting every single piece in your collection, at the time, at least. I just wanted to ask, how was that? Like, how is that experience? Because that is 
wild. It was interesting. I mean, I was at like 39,000 something pieces at the time when I finished counting. And obviously the number is probably give or take like 100 to 200, 300 off because that's a lot of counting. Yeah. Um, when I finished that and like at the night and like I'd walk down the hall and I would like realize I'm counting how many steps I'd take. Like, wow. subconsciously, like, counting, like, one, two, like, for everything that could be counted. Like, I'd be walking, and I'd count how many steps. And so it was kind of like, I was just, like, always, like, mentally counting because it just, like, my brain was just did that for so long. Um, and I wish I had keeping track of how much I had gotten after that, like, kept a running tally. Um, because I have no idea how many pieces I have. But, I mean, just the other day, I had, like, 20,000 new pieces um Ooh. from what? sets and from Bricklink orders and everything just like that arrived and that I had bought. So obviously it's a way larger number and from all the sets, I don't know if you saw I did twenty four hours straight building Lego sets. Yes, um, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, that was like twenty thousand ish, eighteen thousand pieces from that. And so like I'd say I'm probably nearing a hundred or a hundred and ten thousand pieces now. But I'm definitely not gonna go back and check that. Yeah, no, I I understand that for sure. Was what when you did the original video? Was that counting any sets that you had together then, or did you not have any sets together when you did? I that? I had everything sorted. Okay, like all my pieces were sorted. Man, that is. Which I need to do again. <laughs> oh boy, yeah, it got unsorted. Yeah, I have a giant pile on a sheet in, on under my desk that just. <laughs> yeah, it's multiple projects, and then I have like five sets built and they're all big ones and yeah yeah process good luck with that lego sorting it can be fun and also incredibly tedious so i need to hire a sorter so i can keep making videos and not spend a month sorting that is a good job <laughs> idea that's like being a lego sorter that i mean it would only really apply to people in your area but like that's a good that's yeah. a, that's cool that'd be fun man imagine yeah. that that'd be so damn cool I get more time to make my videos and it's like I I have sponsorship deadlines too that I need to make so I can't just take off like a half a month to sort everything um, yeah. otherwise I won't meet the deadline and I much prefer uploading a video than sorting so definitely yeah it's uh it's a process but you know it's worth it in the end when it does get done <laughs> for sure okay and I was gonna ask what is the what is like the the history behind your name RJM Bricks? How how did that happen? What's the story behind that? Started as RJM Brick Nerd, and my logo was gonna be a two by four brick with the Lego brick heads glasses pieces, but then I found that's already a thing. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Brick Nerd. And I was oh. like, no, because I was like, I didn't actually know what Brick Nerd was, and I like made that up and had that complete idea, and then I found that and I was like, well, that's not original anymore. Um. So I just took out the uh, nerd and just put bricks on it. Um, RJM is my initials. So Okay, I see. Yeah. Hey, it rolls off the tongue pretty well, so that's, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah, it does. All right, that's cool. Yeah. Sorry, what were you going to say? Oh, I was going to say, like, there was a chance that my first name would have started with an F. Like, um, just one of the other name options. And FJM bricks just doesn't sound as good. <laughs> it ended up working out quite well, RJM bricks. Yep. And that's awesome. All right. So I guess the final question to end things off, do you have any advice for fellow T-Falls? In terms of in like increasing your builds quality or good builds, really it's just messing around with different pieces. And honestly, I don't think I'm that insane of a builder when it comes down to just like using good pieces and making it look good. I'm more of a mechanical side of things. But really like... Just trying stuff until it works and <laughs> making it look good on the outside. It doesn't matter what's on the inside. Um, like, it can be a complete mess. But as long as it works, as long as it, you know, is what you want it to look like. And on the YouTube side of things, um, just watch what the popular creators are doing and realize, like, and it took me forever to realize this, but... Focusing on retention, which is hard to focus on when you don't know much about it, but really it's just thinking about what would make people watch the longest. And in terms of Lego, you can't get too nerdy with it, even though it's very tempting sometimes. And just keeping it enough 
enough information to satisfy the Lego nerds and a little enough information to not scare away the non Lego nerds. All right. That's some fantastic advice. You, you got, you also, got the, the, the term Lego yeah. nerd isn't a bad thing. No, <laughs> definitely not. It's a great term. <laughs> Cause I am. <laughs> exactly. We're all Lego nerds here. If you're listening to this podcast, you're probably a Lego nerd too. And that is great. Yep. <laughs> All right. Well, that's that's fantastic advice. I love how you covered both the building and, you know, online side of things. That's great. Well, thank you so much for being on, man. Thanks for having me. It was really awesome having you. And before we end this episode, do you have any social medias or other things that you'd like to plug? Obviously, YouTube. It's RJM Bricks. I also have an Instagram. It's it's RJM Bricks. <laughs> and that's it. Okay. You have a Discord server too, right? That's true. You can find the link on my channel. All right. And also everything that we talked about in this video and stuff like that, all that stuff is going to be linked in the description if you want to find any of that stuff. And thank you all so much for watching, and I hope you all enjoyed. That's all for now, and we'll see you all later.